Oh, I want that to come out every day. Well, that's why it's not. They know where their lads go. No lads go.
be that is correct. So we're going to do what we like to call here in Australia Zoo, both Central and South America. These colorful characters are pretty hard to miss, both in sight and sound. There are 17 different species of macaw, and they range in size from a southern shapes or colors, and many snakes don't have ears. Yeah, Shan, so what you're saying is if we were to see a snake and scrub to bite. So it makes sense. People tend to get in when they're trying to catch or even kill a snake. Oh, now thanks to Luca, we have exactly what we need, which is the compression bandage. But Shan, don't stress. If you ever forget it, looked of her feet and incredible vision. Being a whistling cat, he is one of Australia's most widespread species of raptor, as they are able to survive in the harshest of landscapes that our country has to offer. Now, it definitely helps that these birds will pretty much take down anything that they can get their talons on. So that can vary from mammals, insects, reptiles, and even to your other bird species. Now, these birds have actually earned the names Pirates of our Australian skies as they're commonly seen harassing even your large birds of prey with a fresh catch just to try and steal it for themselves. Now I've got you here, he's pretty near and dear to our hearts because believe it or not, he is completely blind in his left eye. So he started life out as a wild born bird that unfortunately because of that injury, he did have to find a second home where it would be nice and safe for a half blind birdie to have a really nice safe second chance at life. Now you're whistling kites. There's so many amazing things about these birds. Now making sure that we are fully aware of our whistling kites out there in the wild and keep an eye out on them in our open roads. Now put your hands together for Fletcher. He makes such an amazing ambassador for all of his whistling kites that night. That's a fish. And that is exactly how Cormorans like these two catch their aquatic meal. So we've just been joined by Albert and Scuba. And Albert, the larger of the two, is a great Cormoran. And Scuba, the smaller two-tone bird, is a little pine cormorant. And as you can see, they are both designed perfectly for life under the water, as they actually lack that waterproof coating on their feathers that many other birds do possess. Well, so this is great for life under the water, birds can't take to the skies with wet feathers. So that is exactly why you'll see cormorants lining in the with those wings outstretched, shaking off any excess water, and leaving them out, almost like they're hanging themselves out to dry. Now, Albert and Scooby here are actually only two of them. Now, as I was here, he sure knows how to make a pretty amazing entrance, and he is a stunning black neck stall, or more commonly known to some as Jabberoo. So, we're going to check him out as he makes his way into the water. He's going to use those long, skinny legs and sharp spear like me to really start out and grab his prey. Now things these guys are looking for can vary from fish, crustaceans, eels, and up north, even your juvenile crocodiles. Now a pretty cool thing about these birds is that they are sexually dimorphic. So you can tell the male from the female just by looking at them. So Douglas, he has beautiful dark brown eyes. Meanwhile, your females will actually have these really bright and piercing yellow eyes. So you can actually see that for yourself today here at the zoo. Because we have a male and a female down in our wetlands area, JJ and Jill, that you can all check out for yourselves. Now, the reason we bring these beautiful birds out here to show you all is because species like the last three, they rely heavily on our water. This time I've bought my best mate and an all-time favourite bird, Lily. Now she is a beautiful red-tailed black cockatoo. Now not only have we trained Lily here to fly from point to point, but we've also trained her to fly from person to person. Now to demonstrate this today, I am going to need the help of an adult volunteer out in the audience. So, anyone want to meet Lily face to face? Uh, guys, I know for a fact that you can be louder than that. Anyone want to meet a bird today? Oh, this is tough. Um, okay. And I go with the gentleman in the blue shirt and the blue sunnies and the bucket hat. Yeah, awesome. So stay right where you are. This is really easy. All I need you to do today is to reach into your wallet and pull me out five bucks. <laughs> uh, I can't hear if you're a few laughing, but we do actually need this note because Lily doesn't know this person. So what we've done is we've trained her to fly to and to recognize a common everyday object, which just so happens to be five bucks. Is that wallet empty? That's sad. Is anyone around you happy to lend a note? I know that cash is 
sparks at the moment. Oh, oh, did I see up here? Ah, oh, that is so kind of you. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, awesome. So with that note, if you can fold it in half for me, please, and one more time in half again. Straight and then place it nice and loosely between two fingers and straight out to the side. Now Lily should see that note and know exactly who to fly to. Nice. <laughs> I love this band. Have a great day. <laughs> we are only kidding. I will get this back to you, especially since it's not even your money today. <laughs> Why don't you stand up for me? Place that arm out to the side. Do you know what? Lily's been pretty impressive. I want to put your skills to the test. Place both arms out. Yeah. Flap really hard. Fly down and grab it. <laughs> <laughs> solid effort, so just one arm out this time, palm facing up like a landing platform. Lily's going to deliver this one via airmail. Once she places the note in the palm of your hand, just fold a few fingers over it for me. Uh, awesome, and thank you very much. This is Lily, our amazing Red Tail Black Oh, well done, Lily. What a little chair. Now it's time to meet some of Lily's best mates. There were dinosaurs, and right now you're about to meet a living fossil, a link to those creatures from the past. There are 27 species of crocodilians found around the planet, from alligators to gharials, caimans to the true crocs. They're the world's most perfect predators. They survive. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the best part of the show. That's the saltwater crocs. Now today. Nick and Graham are going to show you just how easy it is to live alongside these amazing apex predators. And the first mistake people make when up in croc territory is exactly what myself and Nick are doing right now. We are far too close to the water's edge. Crocodiles, they're a stealth attack predator, ambush attack. They're not crashing and bashing across the surface. Take note as Graham makes his way very slowly today through the canal. He's not cruising across the surface trying to kill Nick. He's the unseen predator. And he can do that because he's got lumps and bumps that run down his back. They're called osteoderms. They create a current and a counter current which cancels each other out. So if this was deep, dark, murky water where you naturally find the saltwater crocodile, you'd have no idea there was a 14 footer underneath the water there stalking. Just coming down to have a bath, have a drink. Like I said, if this was deep, dark, murky water, no idea there was a 14 foot croc there. And he'll set himself up just below the water's surface, get his legs forward, and then put on a strike. A bit slow there, Graham. Woo! How was that? Give it up for Graham, guys. Would you like to get into the water and get a territorial response? No, absolutely not. Who wants to see Nick get in the water? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody came here to see Nick get down by the crocodile. <laughs> now, let's see what happens if I get further away from Graham but closer to his water. He cannot help himself. Now, you can see how difficult it is for Graham out here on hard, solid ground, and he goes directly into the water at the closest possible point to try and minimise how much effort he has to put in. But as soon as he gets into the water, he becomes completely weightless. So this is where the crocodile is the most dangerous, of course. Now, even though I'm only a few feet away from Graham, boom, straight away, he wants to submerge and go into that stalk mode. Now, I'll get out of the water because he's pretty quick over there. We'll see if we can get him out for one more strike. Jimmy gave me the smallest piece of food on the planet today. Thanks, Jimmy. No worries. Yeah, give it up for Graham. Isn't he absolutely awesome? People often say, you're crazy, you're absolutely nuts. But when you see Graham there in front of you, you cannot deny that he is absolutely spectacular. And do we get nervous? Yes, every single day. That's why we keep that safe distance and we try and use this opportunity to give people a greater understanding of this animal's behaviour. Because if we can do that, educate everyone on what a crocodile is capable of doing, how they hunt in the wild, 
you guys can go and enjoy that beautiful part of Northern Australia and be safe around these animals because if you follow a few simple rules, it's incredibly easy to be safe around a saltwater crocodile. Now you've seen Graham strike twice from the edge of the water, but Jimmy's going to show you another hunting technique the crocs will use. It's all yours, mate. Thanks, mate. Now, guys, this isn't a trick we've had to teach Graham or any of the crocs here at the zoo. It's something that time they'll use in the wild where they hatch out of an egg, they're under 15 centimetres long, they weigh about 30 grams, and in fact, most of the critters you saw out here earlier would love to snack on a baby croc. So they hide away in the reeds, and they use this technique to hunt frogs, spiders, and insects, anything. Oh, nice. Hear that little pop sound? That was his jaw bones coming together. This is around 3,000 pounds per square inch jaw closing pressure there. To put that in a bit of perspective, car crushes at the tip that put a car into a cube, two and a half thousand. He's got more than that in his mouth. So if he grabs an animal, it's all over by the shouting. Now back to the tail walk. Guys, they'll use this from Graham size all the way larger where they start to target larger prey items, possums, snakes. They absolutely love flying foxes as well. All right, big fella. There we go. <laughs> so scary. Now, guys. Yeah, that's a bit of a birthday, buddy. Now, uh, please let that be a lesson. It might look like a good place to flick a lure or read a book, those overhanging branches, but you do have to be wary of tail walking crocs. Just trying to help a brother Back out. Back to the crocodiles, please, mate. <laughs> right, we're going to try and get Graham out one more time. And just have a look at how quick he is on, on hard solid ground because most of us have heard that myth that these guys have chased you down and ripped you out of the back of the Land Cruiser. It's just not true when they're up at this size. Right, uh, he sees that chicken and gets excited and you can see that initial burst of speed, but that's it now. That is literally flat out for Graham on hard solid ground. Ooh. And a bit of a jaw pop to finish. Yeah, isn't he absolutely awesome? I know I'm a little bit biased, but when you're looking at an animal that's been on the planet for over 200 million years and in this shape or form, relatively unchanged for over 65 million years, Mother Nature just hasn't really designed anything more perfect than the crocodile. They're absolutely spectacular. And, you know, I don't expect you to love them as much as I do and I'm not going to go and give them a cuddle. He'd like it. He'd bite me on the face. But if I sit down in front of Graham, you can see he's not very interested in me. And what I'm really trying to show you guys is that this animal is just not suited for chasing things down on hard, solid ground. I could probably even lie down, not for very long. <laughs> but he's not making an attempt to move forward, and you will have seen why, because he's just not going to chase Jimmy or myself down. Even though Jimmy's steps are about two centimetres each, he's still faster than a saltwater crocodile as he's moving backwards. But you would have seen before, once he's in the water, he is absolute dynamite. And that is where he knows he has the advantage. And really all you have to do when you're up in Northern Australia to avoid a crocodile attack is follow a few really simple rules. Pretty much the opposite of what you've seen us do here today. But in the wild, it's not crystal clear water. We've done that so that you guys can see how he moves. But in the wild, you have no idea that he's there. You stay four to five metres back from the edge of the water and you will avoid that strike. He can strike half of his body length in the blink of an eye. And the largest saltwater crocodile ever recorded was 23 feet, around seven metres, so nearly double that size, which is quite unbelievable when you think about it. But if you're that distance, you're out of the strike range. Like Jimmy showed us, just don't go in an area where there's branches overhanging the water. People have been grabbed by crocodiles in the wild when they launch up and out. If you think those Melaleucas are a really nice spot to watch the sunset or flick a lure, think again, not a really good idea. But the biggest mistake that people make, and we always sound, feel a little bit silly even mentioning it, is they go into the water. Just don't go swimming with saltwater crocodiles. And if you follow those few simple rules, you will never come into conflict with one of these amazing animals. And that human crocodile conflict is something that is absolutely tragic when it occurs but it is very, very rare, and you really have to be making a silly mistake to get yourself in trouble with a croc. And this is really what it boils down to, is this whole stadium was built by Steve in order to get these beautiful animals into people's hearts. We want you to leave here today with a greater respect and appreciation for this amazing animal, and if we've done that just in a small token, then we've really done our job, and we hope that everybody can at least understand and respect the animal's role up in the northern ecosystems. Now, that was one of Steve's dreams, and we're really proud to be able to continue that legacy. But just recently, 
another dream of Steve's has been realised, and that's to get people to stay here for a little bit longer on the coast, the place of the zoo. So we're going to head up to the big screen, and Biddy's going to tell you a little bit about it. Now, the reasons they want to remove and most likely euthanise these crops is that less than two people on average are taken in Queensland each year by salties. Of that, 80% of them were young and they were drinking. So whose fault is that? The crops or the person who did the wrong thing and didn't follow the steps that we did today? My dad taught me from a very early age, be at one with the snake, feel itself, and I am.